Uh, I'll start by saying 12-year-old Kayla would be incredibly surprised to find that I'm actually here right now talking in front of a camera or to learn that Kayla today is doing speaking engagements in front of hundreds if not thousands of people. Um, growing up I was ridiculously shy. I didn't like being the center of attention. I didn't like doing public speaking. I actually hated doing um, class presentations. Um, basketball gave me confidence, not just confidence in my abilities on the court but also confidence in myself. As a post player, if you want the ball, you have to yell for the ball and demand the ball from your teammates. So it gave me that communication skill. Also just teamwork, working with other people, uh, time management. Basketball has given me so much. It goes so much further than just putting the ball through the hoop. My first time holding a basketball, the, the memory that I have is in grade seven. Um, so I had a friend, her name was Nicole Murphy. Uh, we were both tall for her age. I was. 12 years old, um, I was 5'8 at the time, and she invited me to a basketball tryout with her because I was tall. And I was like, sure, why not? So I go, and I probably should have practiced beforehand because when we got to that tryout, it, it was rough. So there was video of that tryout, we'd all be having a pretty good laugh right now. Um, it was a struggle, but I stuck with it because I was having fun, I was with a friend, and the coaching staff put me on the team, not because of my basketball abilities, but because I was tall. So they gave me a chance, and I'm forever thankful for that because 18 years later, I'm still in love with the game of basketball, and it's given me so much over the years. Growing up, I was really tall, and I was always towering over people as a young kid, so I would actually hunch over a lot to try and just blend in and just hide. Um, but I have incredible parents, uh, siblings, and I always had a great group of friends who always encouraged me to love every part of me and be proud of who I am, and that's helped me grow my self-esteem over the years. That word of advice is just be to surround yourself around people who love you for who you are and who celebrate you for who you are. Um, those are the kind of people that you want in your life. And so the first thing that was intimidating for me was knowing that I, as a high school kid, 18 years old, was about to go to um, college and play against um, athletes who are 19 to like 22, 23 years old. And when I watched them as a high schooler being recruited, I just saw these girls or women who were strong and aggressive, taller than me, faster than me. And I never forget going into my first practices and being like, am I gonna be able to keep up and battle with the girls? And if I'm being honest, I struggled a bit strength-wise. I had to really hit the weight room. But conditioning-wise and speed-wise, I was right there with them. Um, so one of the things that I learned was just to lean in on your strengths. Don't focus on your um, weaknesses. Yes, those are things that you should work on and improve upon, but also focus on the strengths that you can use to help you. And then the other thing that I also struggled with was the time management piece. I had a hard time finding that balance and for the first year I focused primarily on basketball and my academics. I didn't really have much of a social life outside of my teammates. I considered that my social life, um, but with time I was able to learn how to balance my academics, basketball, and having a social life as well too. In college, I had a dream going into my senior year of college. Um, the summer before, um, there was tryouts for the Canadian Senior Women's National Team. And up until that point, I had played Team Ontario, I had played for the Junior National Team, I was a part of NIDA, the National League Development Academy. So the next progressive step would be to play for the national team. So I try out for the team and I was cut. And that was very devastating for me. But that actually propelled me into my next dream, which was I want to play professional basketball. And I used that experience. I told myself I want to prove Canada basketball wrong, that I could do this and that I could play at a high level and that I could continue to play and show them that they made a mistake. So I actually went back to my dorm after I returned back to college and I wrote down all of my goals going into my senior year. And one of those goals was to get drafted into the WNBA. I'll never forget, my dad called me and he was like, Kayla, guess what, guess what? I was like, what? And he was like, your name is on the WNBA mock draft. And I was like, what are you talking about? So I go look at the mock draft and I'm the last name on the list. And to me, that was motivation to like, okay, Kayla, people recognize the work that you're doing. They think that you can possibly play professional basketball after college. So I used that as motivation. And throughout my senior year, I saw my name slowly but surely go up that mock draft list and at the end of my senior year I was drafted to the WNBA and that would begin my professional playing career. So I took a negative and used that as motivation that led to a positive. Before basketball, my first love was actually art. I love drawing and illustrating, so I always ran towards any art classes, the fashion design classes, I just loved those. And those were always my highest marks, if I'm being honest. 
Um, so I've been pretty fortunate that I've been able to merge my two loves, basketball and art. Uh, one of the ways that I did this was through a children's book called The Magic of Basketball. Um, when I was younger, I had this teacher, Madame Cassette, and she was incredible. Because of her, I decided to go into education to become a teacher, so I have my degree in education. And I always knew I wanted to teach and work with kids. I was able to use my art and basketball to write a children's book, so that still allows me opportunities to get into the classroom, interact with kids, and just share all the magical gifts and life skills that basketball can teach young kids. One would be the fact that I got to play against some of the best women in the world. Um, it is so hard to crack the WNBA and make a roster. There's only 144 spots, and I'm very thankful to say that at a time I was one of 144. And one of my favorite experiences is playing against people that I was watching on TV at one point. So like Sylvia Fowles, um, Candace Parker. She actually gave me one of my welcome to the league moments where I thought I had an easy layup and she just threw my shot. So <laughs> that's one memory that I have. Um, another thing that I love about the WNBA is the women of the WNBA. Um, they are educated, they are strong, they are talented, and they are vocal and they use their platform in the WNBA for good. That's the power of sports, and it's one thing that brings us all together, which I truly love. Going to Tokyo to the Olympics was a dream come true for me. That had been something I'd been chasing for eight years. Perseverance is key, and it was an incredible experience. Although, because we're in a pandemic right now, um, we didn't have the full experience. We weren't able to um, explore the city of Tokyo. Um, being in the village was absolutely incredible. I loved the opportunity to represent my country with pride and joy. It was such an honor um, to represent Canada and playing a sport that I absolutely love um, alongside 11 incredible women. So it was, it was an amazing experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. To the youth out there, I would say that there is so much power in sports. Um, whether you choose to play for fun, if you decide you want to use it um, to get a free education, whatever the case may be, sports will give you way more than you'll ever expect. My go-to or favorite candy is anything chocolate. So Smarties, Kit Kat Chunky, um, milk chocolate. I'm a big chocolate-holic over here. My favorite movie that's coming to mind right now is anything Avengers. Um, really enjoy the superheroes. My favorite hobby outside of illustrating and drawing would have to be playing cards with family and friends. One of my go-to songs right now on my playlist is Tamiya, So Into You. I think that's just a classic. I will play that forever and ever and never gets old to me. My favorite thing about Toronto is the diversity. I think uh, the fact that we have people from all different walks of life, um, different religions, different races, I think that's what makes it so beautiful and such an incredible city.